Okay. Um, oh my God, that's going to drive me crazy. Um, happy December. November was freaking amazing. I did drop in um, 12K and above chat that Paul had texted me today. And a lot of my leaders were like, what did he say? So I want to like address that because um, it was super cool um, what he had to say. And I don't know if she's on here. Let me see. Hold on. I don't know. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, I mean, is she in a room 30 feet away? <laughs> she's upstairs. Why can't I see? Oh, there's everybody. Do you see everyone? I only saw five people, but it's because my settings were weird. Okay. Okay. So she's jumping on. So let me see if I can see her. She just got home. So I was like, are you good on the Zoom? She's like, yes, yes. Hold on. I charge my iPad. So um, Paul texted me, call him. And anytime he's ever said that, like, I know, like, so, like I don't get nervous like I normally would because he's so reinforcing. He's so positive. And to me, that is such confirmation that I'm in the right place at the right time. Um, so he texted me, call me. And to me, this is really cool because this, yes, he was bragging on one person, but to me, this speaks volumes about our company as a whole. Okay. So he's like, Hey, and I'm like, yes. And he's like, what am I interrupting? I'm like, friends miss <laughs> what's going on. And he's like, who's Katie that lives with you? And I'm like, you know who she is. And he's like, no, she just put up a post that like you refused to build her because I have looked at her in the face and I'm like, I'm not building your ass. Like until you get your shit together, I will never give you placement. I'll tell you that like as a mass enroller, as your leader, like I will straight up look at my personally sponsored friend that lives with me and tell her that I have no problem saying that. And he's like, Katie, Katie. And I was like, yes, you know who she is. And he's like, I'll be damned. Is she that girl from Indiana? And I said, yes. And he's like, she's the girl that went 12 K in 12 days a year ago. And I said, yes. And he's like, well, what do you mean? She was 20 K ahead in volume. And I'm like, well, you know, her volume had dipped. She had lost rank. And he's like, really? And I said, yes. And he said, and she was up $20,000 in volume last month. And I said, yes. And he goes, how this time of year, how? And I said, it's funny you ask. I said she lost two of her top leaders to a different company and she didn't let it distract her and she put her head down and she worked and he's like, are you serious? And I said, yes. And then he was like, this is why I love Paul. He drives me crazy about certain things. I'm not, I'm just, I'm a very, I would tell him to his face, but he cares. Okay. He cares. He's always like free accounts. And Katie has straight up told Paul a year ago, free accounts don't pay my bills. And he's like, Oh, and she's like, they don't like he is very old school, but he cares. Right. And so today I was like, yeah, two of our top leaders left. And he's like, where'd they go? And I told him and he's like, why'd they go there? I was like, you want me to shoot you straight? And he's like, yep. And so I told him, and he goes, send me what you're talking about. Cause I was telling him like about their comp plan. There's a fast bonus you can make, but that's not residual income. Right. And he's like, you're right. And I was like, I'm smart enough to know what looks shiny and what looks like good for the long run. And he's like, I don't care. I want to see what their bonuses are. Send that to me. Why I want to tell you that is because our CEO cares. He cares about the competition not about sales. He cares about what people are being paid, why their lives are being changed. And he's like, I want to know like what their bonuses are. I want to take a look at that. And to me, that was so awesome because he wasn't, he didn't say anything bad about him. He didn't say like, well, that company's stupid. Or he was like, why are people going there? And I said, well, I think that they're very like, there's a facade about a fast bonus that's there. Um, and it's another health and wellness company, right? And it's a supplement company. And he's like, but I don't get it. And I said, well, Paul, anytime someone flashes fast money in front of you, it's quick money. But I said, I've been in the industry for three years. So for me, I can zoom out and I can say, yeah, but when that's gone, how much are you making every week? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. He goes, but 
I want to see what kind of bonuses they're offering at each rank that are always there. So it was so cool to me to talk to our CEO and for him to be that transparent where he's like, let me take a look at it. And he wasn't negative. He wasn't like, oh, that company's stupid or, oh, that company's new. He's basically what he said to me, the message he sent to me was, let me see what I can do. Let me look at that. And I love that about our company. That gave me such validation that like I'm in the right place at the right time with a CEO who is ever changing, who cares about us. Um, and I just wanted to share that with y'all. To me, that was so cool. Um, so, um, oh, I'm looking at Rachel's thing. Oh, new house. See, I get sidetracked. That's why I had closed this. Sorry. <laughs> I get so sidetracked with the little chat. Um, but he was really like, how, how are y'all pulling numbers this time of year? How are you ahead? How are you? And I was like, dude, our mind is bulletproof. And I'm going to talk for like two minutes and then I'm going to pass it over to Steph. Um, I'm going to tell you again, and I'm going to tell all of y'all again, my mind is bulletproof. Does it mean that negativity doesn't exist? No. It means I don't entertain it. So if there are girls going to different companies, if there is this, if there is that, I don't care. I don't care. If you're texting me about it, I guarantee you there are 700 active people on our team about it. And if I took the time to respond to every text message I got about that, I would not have already signed three promoters on a pack this month. Okay? I don't care. So please know. There will always, I can tell you 110%, there will always be a distraction. Always, 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 right? I will straight up not respond. I will straight up not engage. I will always protect you and I will always run this team with integrity, but I can promise you that's not where money is made. That's not where lives are changed, entertaining that nonsense, okay? Um... I want to ask you a question and then I'm going to flip it over to Steph. When you talk about opportunities in life, are you chasing an opportunity every day or are you an opportunity for somebody else? And I want you to stop and think about that. I'm going to get up every day and know that I am chasing an opportunity for me and my family, but I know I know because of my confidence that I would be a damn good opportunity for somebody else. So if someone else is in my inbox, if someone else is in my face, in my text message, calling me, presenting me with an opportunity, what they're actually doing is calling an opportunity because I'm worthy. I'm, I'm capable of creating a multi-million dollar business with a badass team. They don't have an opportunity for me. I'm an opportunity for them. And I will never talk bad about anyone that goes somewhere else. If you want to go, go. But I'm also very smart to know when I am being played to when I am being hunted, right? And I'll tell you this, as your leader, I will always keep it 100 with you. If I thought we didn't have the right comp plan or the right products and it wasn't the right time in the right place, be having a different conversation with you, period. But I know I'm at the right place at the right time in the right vehicle with the right products and I'm happy and I'm content to grow there. Okay. Please know I'm a businesswoman first uh, and then I'm a wife and then I'm a mom and then I'm a thriver. And I promise to always be those things. Okay. Um, I love y'all. I just know that I am so bulletproof that I'm looking at who is the next life I can change, who is the next person I can help, and everything else, earmuffs on, uh, blinders on, I'm not going to get distracted. So I'm going to send it over to Steph. And, and why I'm telling you that is because Paul's call today confirmed so much for me. It confirmed that he's not afraid to look left and right and know how to reward us more, to know how to look at what are we up against. Um, because we have the right tools and he's not afraid to increase those tools. And I love that about our company. So Steph, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. So you went over a lot of the things that I was going to go over. <laughs> so if I repeat it in a different way, it's because it's in my notes. So whatevs, it's okay. But I loved everything you said. Um, 
and that's a good, I'm starting in the middle of my note. So that's kind of a good segue for, um, the first thing I want to talk about is how do you view, your, view yourself? If you view yourself like I'm not good enough or, you know, I'll never be in that person's shoes or, you know, I could never get to that point where I can get a luxury vehicle paid for me or I could never reach the top of the company. Um, if you're viewing yourself like that and you're carrying yourself like that, shame on you and shame on me if I were to view myself like that too. And this is why I say that because when you don't have the confidence in yourself and when you don't have the confidence in what you're capable of doing, um, that's going to be your biggest roadblock to moving forward. And I say that because I am living freaking proof of that. There was a time where I, I've been in this industry for five years. Okay. There was a time where I literally was I, I'd look at like the top rank, the top person, you know, that top income earner and all these people, maybe even like middle rankers, you know, I'm like, man, I could never get there. And like, I'd always look to them like, man, that's so cool that they're there, but you know, I could never be there. And with that mentality and that mindset, I was only going as much as my confidence level could bring me because um, how I viewed myself is how I was carrying myself. And people can see that people are going to go um, with people who have confidence in themselves, because why would they go with somebody who doesn't have the confidence and it shows? Um, so with that being said, um, your numbers, your rank, that has no bearing on where you're going to be going. Okay. That does not define you. What defines you are your actions. And I'm going to give an example of this because I know Courtney and I have both talked about this when we were even before we hit 4K, when we were 4Ks, when we were shooting for 12K, things like that, we were running our own opportunity lives on Facebook. We were um, we were doing all the things as a 200K mindset because we saw a need and we picked up and went for it. We didn't wait for somebody to come down and be like, hey, this needs done and that needs done to do it. We knew where there was a need and we did it. Um, so... I want you to ask yourself, if you're brand new today, if you're been in here for nine months, if you're at 4K, if you're at 200K, if you're at 80K, I don't care what rank you are. You tell me, well, don't physically tell me, but I ask yourself this, like, how do I view myself? Are you 200K material? You better be saying hell yes and be doing the actions that needs to be done to get there. Um, and that, again, it doesn't mean waiting for Courtney, waiting for me to say, hey, could you do this as a leader or could you do that? Like, no, we didn't have anybody coming to us telling us what to do. We saw the need and we got there, right? Um, let's see. Having, oh, and my next point with that. So, on the flip side of that, I also want to tell you that having the mindset that you need um, to find your next rock star, and I'm going to be super blunt and honest here, is selfish and is bullshit. And the reason why I say that is because I've never gone out there. I won't say never. I will not say never because I have done this in the past. I've had five years to crash and burn on my face of mistakes and learning um, curves and all these things in this industry to realize this. Okay. But what I'm saying is don't ever be that person to stand up every morning and be like, okay, if I could only get that next rock star, I could stop being red legs or, you know, I need another rock star. Or I need one rock star to hit my next rank. I can't do this by myself. Things like this. And I've said that. You guys, I've said that. I'm not saying if you've said that you're stupid, but what I am saying is that's the wrong mentality to have. Um, if you want to go in places with this business, then you step up and be like, I'm going to get there no matter what it takes for me to get there. And that's, and it's not hard, you guys. It's not getting up at the butt crack of dawn and staying on your phone and your computer all day long until it's midnight and you get two hours of sleep and you do it all over again. I used to do that. And that was a waste of time. And I found myself exhausted and I found myself dreading waking up to start over again. This is supposed to be a fun um, journey. Yes, it's going to be hard sometimes, but it's supposed to be a journey that, um, that you get up and have passion for. So the person that comes into your business too, um, 
and wants to become, hold on, how did I put this? Okay, so with that being said, if the person coming into your business is only like, I want to come in, I want to thrive for free, I maybe want to uh, pay for a tank of gas here or there, maybe buy a bag of groceries. If you're not treating them the same way that you're treating the person coming in saying like, I need to quit my job. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to go 40 K next month, like all these things, then you're doing it wrong. You need to be treating all of your people. People come into this business with you because they followed you. They've trusted you. They have confidence in you and they're wanting to change their life. And whether that means they need to pay for their groceries or they need to pay for a new car or they need to buy a new house. It doesn't matter. Everyone's success looks different and we need to be validating them and we need to be um, having the same encouragement towards that person as the next. Okay. Because that person coming in who only wants to come in for free product is just as important to your business and your organization as the person coming in ready to run to 200 K. Um, so, and, and I'm going to give a little example about myself. I came in to this business guns blazing. Yes. I knew I needed to make this work or I was going to crash and burn because if y'all have heard my story, which most of you have, I was in a very, very bad spot mentally, emotionally, and financially before I started this business. But I also came into this business for the first week saying, maybe I'll hit 40 K in my first year. And I wasn't taking myself serious enough. And maybe my enroller could have looked at me and was like, man, she only thinks she can hit 40K in the first year. She's not going to be someone that I'm going to put full trust and confidence in because this person over here that I signed the same day says she wants to go 200K in her first month. So this person I'm going to focus on more. What if he had done that? And I saw that as this person doesn't care about me and I walked away. Okay. I came into this having little confidence in myself, but I knew I had to make it work. And within a week, seeing some of the power of this business in just the first week, my mentality flipped. I changed my mind on my future. I went to 40K in my second month and I went 200K in my sixth month. Okay, so things change. So treat your people that come in just as important as the next person. Um, let's see. So yeah, just bottom line on that is don't go looking for your next rock star. Go looking for the next person you can help change your life. You cannot come into this and focus every day on um, just your needs and just your wants. And why I say that is because, again, this is something that I used to do. Like I used to come into, not with this business, but in previous businesses I've been in. Again, I've been with this industry for five years. I used to come into this business and, and wake up every morning and say, I need to hit this because I need this to happen for me. And it was all me, 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 me. And I never really took the time to have that flip or that switch flip in my brain to think that I could actually help people. And yeah, I've heard people, you know, leaders within the industry say, you know, you want to come in and help people, not yourself. And I never understood that. But the minute I had that switch flip in my brain where I, um, got so passionate about this, so passionate about the power of this industry, so so passionate about the power of these products where now I wake up and all I want to do is think to myself, who's the next person I can help out of the circumstances that I used to be in? That's when my business started to change and that's when my life started to change. And I will never say that lightly because I am living proof that my life has completely changed because of that mindset flip. Um, so let's see. But yeah, if you come in every morning or if you wake up every morning just thinking, you know, how like I need to do this, this and this because of me, 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 don't expect your business to grow very fast at all. Um, until you can see that we're in, in until your mentality flips to say, who else can I help? Things are not going to grow as fast as you want them to, and I promise. Um, for a quick second, Courtney, can you talk about your cousin um, that relates to this and then turn it back to me? Yeah, so my cousin um, was a customer, was a customer, was a customer, and she had really wanted to um, be a promoter. But she was like, I just want to make a little bit of extra money 
and I want free products. Y'all, I had to hear her need. I have to hear her need. Do you think that it would be smart for me to push her to go 4K, 12K, 40K, 80K, 200K? That's selfish, right? I want you to think about your mindset. She was with um, my previous company with me. She's like, but every month you told me before I needed my sales at 400 and like court, I don't really want that. And I said, okay, it's different. It's what they want and what they need. And that's a perfect example of how I was super, super um, selfish in the past and how now, like, uh, do you think I want her to come in and go 200 K? Yeah. Of course I do. I would love for her to experience that. But would it be fair for me to be like, I want you to be a runner. I want you. To, no, I, guys, stop and listen to other people's wants and needs. Stop. Like I can't micromanage her. I can't have goals or expectations for her that she doesn't have for herself. I can only help her reach whatever she wants to reach. So I just encourage you to do the same. Yes. Thank you. I remember when you were telling me that story, I was like, that's perfect for this topic that I have on the huddle. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about is figuring out your audience and figuring out yourself. Um, branding yourself is so, so crucial in this business. And I say that because again, people are going to buy into you and buy into your emotions. They're not going to buy your products. Okay. So if they, all they see with your profile is a product, um, chances are they're probably not going to ever connect with you because people don't connect with products. People will connect with people. So an example of this, an ex example of branding is let's say you are um, Marianne, for example. Marianne is an animal lover through and through no matter what. She loves her dog, all those things. She also is a new stepmom. Um, she's learning all about that side of things. So with Marianne, part of her branding if, if she, if like her dog ends up in some of her posts, it should because that dog is part of her life. That dog is part of, um, her family and things like that. And people are going to connect with that. Like other people who relate to Mary and other people who are animal lovers through and through who are dog lovers or whatever, they're going to relate to that. And they're going to follow her as a person and see the snippets of Thrive coming in through her life versus her life is Thrive and her kids and her dog are on the side. You know what I mean? So really find your target audience. And I have, um, I had Lauren upload an avatar sheet that, um, I sent her into our team page, but I have a new one. Um, a more in-depth one, you guys, I really, really, really challenge you to create, first of all, an avatar. And what that means is um, who is your ideal client? Who is your ideal person to connect with? And you don't even have to say client. Who's your ideal friend? Who is your ideal person? And that person, to be quite honest, should be you. Who can you connect with the most out of anybody? It's you. So if you, you can find some people who are very like-minded and relatable to you, that's where you're going to be able to start finding your target audience um, and relating to that person. Like for me, for example, like there's a lot of teachers on my team. However, I've never been a teacher. I've never been in the education world as far as that kind of thing goes. So I'll be honest, at first when my team started growing with teachers, I, I didn't know how to relate to them. I didn't know how to relate to them. My target is not going to be to go target teachers. I'm not going to know what to talk about with them. Besides, yeah, I have a whole bunch of other teachers on my team. I'd love to connect you guys. Like, that's all I could say because I'm not a teacher. I have, however, been a cheerleading coach. I'm a gymnast mom. I'm a soccer mom. I'm a mom of two kids. I stay home. I, I have a small dog. Like, we're into super modern homes. Like, there's a lot of things about me that I can relate to with other people that I could never relate to with people, right? So don't be going to target an audience because you think their profile is pretty but you have nothing in common with them. So I challenge you to start building your brand and really to start that is trying to get to know yourself better, okay? And creating a physical, write, write down all the characteristics of this person that you would want on your team, that you would want to help out of whatever circumstances 
that are maybe similar to your circumstances or your past circumstances and write it down. And that's the person that you want to try to connect with. And that's the person that you want to try to search for on Instagram, things like that. Um, and this is going to go for your personality as well. So again, finding who you are as a person and a, your personality, like you as a person should be your ideal client. Okay. Um, spinning off that too. So I'm talking about growing your network with that, that target audience, 80% of your time. And this is kind of a segue into a new subject, but 80% of your time should be spent on you should be spent on your business, on your new growth, on your new audience, on your network, on your business. Okay. 20% of your time should be all the other things like focusing on, you know, encouraging your team, helping your leaders within your team, doing what you need for your team. But you guys, 80% of your time should be your business. I say this because there are so many of us who are spending way too much of our time trying to motivate our team. I get people in my inbox 24 seven. I don't know how to motivate my team. I don't know how to get this person out of her funk. You don't have to know how to get that person out of their funk. What you need to be worrying is, or what you need to be worrying about is focus, focusing on you, your mindset, your business, leading from the front. And by doing that, your team who wants this should become inspired by that, okay? Your team is going to be following in your footsteps. So maybe if you are not in a great mindset, and are, maybe you're in your own funk and you're um, constantly focusing, like your main focus is, oh man, this person's not doing much or that person I'm trying to, I'm in their inbox every day asking them what I can do to help, things like this. They're not being receptive. They're not doing the things I'm asking for. Move on. Move on. And I don't say that um, rudely by any means. Obviously, I love every person within my team, every person within my organization. I would love more than anything for every person in this organization to reach 200K, but I'm telling you right now, not every person will. And the reason why is because they're blocking themselves for whatever reason. They may not be doing the actions. They may think it's too hard of work. This industry might not be for them, and that's okay. We let people in with grace. We need to let them go with grace. And if this is for them, and if it turns out that they made a mistake in their own head by walking away, they'll be back, okay? We need to stop focusing so much on how to motivate the next person after the next person instead of leading from the front ourselves, okay? Um, where was I? So um, I guess the last thing I want to say about that is if you want your team to grow, then you need to be growing yourself and you need to be focusing most of your time on you and your business. It's not fair to yourself to be giving all of your time every day to all the people who aren't being receptive. We have the tools, okay? We have the resources. We're giving it to our teams. Now, it, there's a point in... Um, mentoring our new team members and mentoring our team where it becomes we're wanting it more than they're wanting it and that should never be the case okay um distance yourself from people who said there was a need but didn't take action this kind of goes along with the focusing too much on the people who just either they're not ready for it or they need their time or whatever it may be and i'm going to give a prime example of this i do not think this person will mind whatsoever but when I first came into this business, I brought one of my good friends from my previous business. We were sidelines into this business with me. Um, and we were going to run to the top together. But this person had some personal things going on in her life that I 120% respected. And, but I didn't sit here and push in her inbox every single day. What are you doing? Like, why didn't you post yesterday? Like, what can I do to help you 24 seven? Because I knew that she needed her space. I knew the things that was going on in her life. And I respected that I backed off and I moved forward. I even stopped taking her in like our team stuff and things like that, because I knew that stuff was a distraction from where her focus was at the 
time. And I want to tell you that this person, it took, took over a year to get her own self into a mind space where she knew that it was her time now. Now she's back. She's running. She is going full force and she's excited. But you want to know what I didn't do? I didn't discredit her for not working. Because if I would have done what I was talking about earlier and treated her differently because she wasn't making me a paycheck, you think she'd be back today? You think she'd still be my friend? Hell no. She's my friend first all day, every day. We have to let people have their space if they're wanting their space, okay? Um, we cannot be forcing people into this business, into these products for our own gain because that will only do nothing but backfire on you. Okay. So, um, let's see. Um, every person you interact with is going to increase or de decrease your energy. So if you are constantly interacting with somebody, whether it's a friend, a relative, somebody in your downline and their energy is negative the entire time, like I can't sign anybody. I woke up with a headache. I'm sick again. Like, why can't I ever be not sick? Like just constantly constantly negative if you're feeding into that all day every day talking with them about this negative energy what do you think is going to happen to you your energy is begin going to become negative and that's going to affect um your mindset maybe your home life your business it's going to affect everything so don't be afraid to cut back on interactions with people if they're not serving your mindset, if they're not serving your energy in a positive way, even if they're on your team, even if they're your friend, even if they're um, a family member. And I'm gonna tell you two examples with me. I had a friend, she was actually super, super important to me. She was the very first friend that welcomed me into this new town when I moved here 20 years ago. She was my best friend for the longest time. She came into my last industry with me or my last um, direct sales company with me. And when I decided that that business was no longer for me, shit basically hit the fan between her and I and her and me and um, many other people within that organization. And I will tell you that some of the things that were said to me, some of the things that were discussed like not just with her but multitude of people within that organization put me into this mindset where I started to believe every nasty negative thing that was said to me and I went into a deep depression for nine months what do you think happened in those nine months my income drastically decreased down to nothing I got myself into almost twenty thousand dollars in credit card debt I got myself into the worst health that I had ever, ever been in. Um, my relationship and family was falling apart. I, I was this close and I'm going to be straight honest with you. I told Aaron's sister one time and it was the Easter of that year that I was walking away from the family and never looking back. Like I was done, but it's because I let that type of energy get into my head and I believed it. Okay. I focused all of my attention on all of that negative energy and it sucked the life out of me. Um, and the minute I decided that it's okay to step away from that stuff, no matter who it is, I was trying to hang on to a friendship I had for 20 years, but it was a, it turned out to be the most toxic, poisonous thing for my life um, and everything around me for the longest time that I finally realized it and I cut ties. We're to this day not friends. I probably will never talk to this person again, but you want to know how much happier I am today and how much different my life is today. That's when I decided that things were going to be different, that I was worth more, that I was enough, that I didn't have to believe those things again, and that I was not going to let people's negative energy affect my life any longer. That's when my life started to change. My health started to get better. I started this business because I had the confidence to actually do so. Um, and y'all know my story since the start of this business. I have good income now, great income. I can't even, I've never had this type of income before because I decided that it's okay to move on from people, okay? Um, so just remember that what you're letting in your head and what you're letting in your mind can either be 
poison for you, or it can be the opposite, okay? Um, as far as if that ever happens with people on our team, because I will get people in my inbox saying, how do I handle this? You know, this person every single day is coming to me with um, a negative attitude because maybe their, their paycheck is dropping or maybe whatever with this business isn't working for them, what do I do? You wanna know what I say? Tell them their piece, give them the encouragement they need, give them the resources they need and move on, focus on your business. But if you're gonna marry into trying to make this person feel better 24 seven for five months, that's only gonna suck you down with them, right? It's okay to, um, to not have to deal with it. And I'm not saying like, if you're gonna come into my inbox and, and I'm not saying don't come into my inbox and ask for help if, if you're wondering how I can change things, how you know I can maximize on this business, whatever. I am there to help all day, every day. But there is a difference between um, me providing a person with the tools, the resources, the help, the encouragement, all of that, and then that person not being receptive to it versus that person being receptive to it. There's only so much we can do and we have to be okay with that. Um, so with that, let's see. I know that it's super hard too because um, as leaders in, I mean, as soon as you have your first person in your, in your organization, you're a leader, right? So as leaders, how did I write this? We are responsible, or wait, we're responsible um, for showing them the way, showing, giving them the resources, giving them the tools, but we are not responsible for what they do with it. And you have to be okay with that. And I know as a team with a whole bunch of women, a lot of us are very empathetic and a lot of us um, get caught up in emotions. It's super hard to not take on other people's emotions, but in this business, we just have to know how to separate that and know that we are not responsible for, for how somebody feels about their paycheck, okay? We're not responsible for how somebody feels about their paycheck. And you have to remember that every single day. Yes, I want all my people on my team, all of us to have great paychecks, but I can't get too down on myself if one of my people come to me and say, my paycheck's down, now I'm sad, now I'm in this funk, all these things. Like, I can't let that affect me. You know what I mean? Um, we're not responsible for what they feel about their paycheck. We're not responsible for their mindset. Um, that's up to them. We'll provide the tools and resources all day long, but it's up to them on what they're going to do with it. Um, stop thinking you're, you're responsible for your team, okay? You're not. You're responsible to, you have responsibilities to your team, but you are not responsible for your team. And know that big difference because there is a big difference. Um, ending that topic, and I swear there's not much left. I'm just talking a lot, but ending that topic, negativity is going to be the death of us. Um, period. Like I said, like Courtney said, like many of your leaders probably have said, um, the minute you let negativity come in is the minute things are going to downward spiral and it's not pretty. And I just told you my experience with that and let I, and what I allowed to happen in my life. I don't want anybody to ever go through the shit that I went through for nine months after basically feeling like I lost a, like a freaking my husband or something like I was super close with that person like I let such negative words and actions from all these people get so far into my head that I let it ruin my life for nine months and it ruined everything around me okay so you have to be able to recognize when that negativity is coming in and stop it and stop it as soon as you see it um so on that note, if any of you have ever messaged me like 20 times the same thing, like I'm, I'm in a super bad funk, I don't know what to do, and you get a very vague answer from me, it's probably because I've told you a million times <laughs> the things that I would do, and there's only so much I can say besides doing it for you and not impossible. Can I say something really quick, Steph? Yes. So with that, it is not that we don't care. It is not that we don't want to sit there and encourage you. It is that it's not even that that is a waste of our time. It is that that will not work. 
So what I have realized, and, and me and Steph were talking about this earlier today, is I'm not resp responsible for my team. I'm responsible to them. <clears throat> a girl texted me, like, all this negative stuff today. She's actually a side sister. And I said, once you realize what's already on the inside of you, you'll be good. But y'all, I can't make you realize that. Steph can't. Nobody can. It is not that we don't want to encourage you. It is that if you're looking for outside validation for your self-confidence, that doesn't make sense. I can give it to you all day long. Steph can give that to you all day long, but self-confidence, where does that come from? Yourself. You got to look in the mirror. I can tell you all day long you're capable, but until you realize it's not going to, so it's not like, oh, that's a waste of my time. It's that it doesn't work. I'm just going to let you go. You've got to like find that within you. Um, so that's why I don't ever want y'all to think me and Stephanie are like assholes or hard asses. But <clears throat> if, I mean like Steph, you know, her and I are pretty strong in our minds. Not because I was born that way. Because I've discovered that in my mind. So I'm pretty good where she'll look at me and I can tell if we're on a FaceTime and she's like, I'm like, oh, I'm being negative. Like, I know. You know what I mean? And I know and I can check myself. But until you can check yourself, it doesn't matter what we say. So a lot of times we just disengage and let you have your space and give you grace. So if you come to us over and over and we're like, eh, it's kind of like that teacher that, like, points the student back in the right direction. But I'm not, we can't do it for you. So, okay, that's all I have to say. Yeah. 100% agree. I only have two more things left I want to say. Um, okay, so in this industry, it is okay for you to be somebody's accountability partner and somebody else to be yours. And you guys, it doesn't have to be the same person. So what I mean by that is this industry looks different accountability-wise. So make your partner somebody that you would want to switch places with. Somebody that is it that um, you're inspired by. Somebody that's doing the things or has met the goals that you want to meet, okay? Your accountability partner should be somebody you would want to switch places with like yesterday. And then be that person for somebody else, okay? Be that partner for somebody who would want to switch places with you, right? Um, an accountability partner can't push or lead you somewhere that you um, – that they aren't or haven't been yet, right? So what I mean by that is like Maria Dillard. Maria is like our billionaire top person within our organization. She's like our top, top, top 200K leader, okay? She's like a billion K leader. <laughs> Anyways, she's not going to, if she has a bad day and if she's in like a super weird funk one day, she's not gonna go, um, to somebody who maybe used to have their shit together five years ago when they came into this business together, but today is like never enrolling or in like in this giant thing. She's going to go to somebody where she wants to be like, she's going to go to someone like Paul somewhere where this person can look to her and give her advice and guidance as to how they got where they're at right so when choosing an accountability partner be super super picky with it don't just go to your best friend because she's your best friend she might be and i'm going to tell you this my very best friend her name is casey um courtney's heard all about her i love her to death she literally she's my very very best friend i was her maid of honor in her wedding like she's yet to be on these products with me she's yet to be in this business with me and, and I tell Courtney all the time, I love this girl to death with all of my heart, but there's so much of me sometimes that just doesn't want to go sit and hang out with her. And the reason why is because she's not growing in her, in fact, she's actually going super backwards in her mindset right now. And I have tried all that I could do to try and uplift her and things like that. And obviously, I'm never going to stop trying to help her. And she's always going to be my best friend. But I'm not going to go to her for advice on how to bulletproof my mind. You know what I mean? Just because she's my best friend. She's not. She's the opposite of the person I would want to go to. I'm going to go to somebody who I look up to. Somebody who is bulletproof minded. Somebody who has 
you know, consistently or like consistent, better production than me. Like I'm going to go to somebody who's been somewhere that I haven't been yet and I need guidance to get there. Okay. Um, remember how Courtney has talked about bulletproofing your mind and how important it is to feed it. Um, and if you're actually letting those things in and those people in without bulletproofing your mind, then, um, it's like feeding a kid who's allergic to peanuts, peanut butter. It's poison, right? So just, just keep that in mind when um, you're choosing your accountability partner because you want to get around somebody who makes you uncomfortable with your dreams. And what I mean by that is that person's been there. They're continuing to thrive there. and sometimes we have to swallow our pride and be like, guide me, tell me how to get there, help me. But then you got to be receptive to it. So just be super picky when you're picking your accountability partner. Um, okay. And lastly, but not least, you guys remember when you came into this business, uh, this industry in whatever it may be, when you first started with any of this, remember what you prayed for. Okay. Remember that you wanted the guidance, the type of guidance that you wanted, the resources you wanted, and all the help you needed when you came in. Remember that when you're bringing in your new people, okay? Please remember that and give your newbies some grace and get to their level. Every person coming into this industry needs guidance in a different way, okay? Everybody learns in a different way. So we have to be patient with the people we bring in um, they may ask you the same, all your new people, they may ask you the same question. How do I, you know, enroll a new customer? How do I, you have to be able to guide that person. Okay. Because remember you prayed for a team, you prayed to succeed in this business. You prayed for an organization that was going to bring you some financial freedom. So do not be resentful for God giving you what you prayed for. Okay. Just remember that. Remember what you needed when you came in and remember that your newbies are no different. They need you and they need your guidance. They need your patience. Um, let's see here. Oh, and last thing about that, they came into this business and this industry because they trusted you. They had confidence in you and they took a chance on you and they're ready to come in and kill it with you. So you just, just give them some grace. Um, that is, oh, no, 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 I have one last thing. This is the last thing, and then I'm going to, okay, so I only am bringing this up, and yes, it was brought up last week during um, a work with me, and, or during live, maybe they were the same thing, I don't remember, it was like all meshed together, but I did a few one-on-one -on -one Zooms last week um, with some people who really are ready to run, who really are ready to get their shit together to make a change for the positive in their future. And I really just help them understand how simple the actions are. Some people, and I'm going to just say most people come into this business and overthink things. Um, very much overthink things. Like they don't know what to post. Like what do I, what do I post? How do I make it perfect? What type of picture do I put up? All these things, you guys, it's not, it's not that difficult to marry very simple actions and become consistent with them. You don't have to be perfect. And, and the more you overthink something, um, probably the more you're going to push your own self away from that success. So what I mean by that is take mac of mac, taking massive action does not take massive um, planning. In fact, it's quite the opposite. So just think of five or six easy, committable actions and marry them going forward. Um, if not, and you're chasing um, a bunch of little ideas, like, oh, maybe well, this will work. Or maybe if I do this and like create this big thing over here, this will work. Like if you're doing a bunch of those things and not staying consistent, like you're never going to know which one's actually going to work. So, so find five or six simple, committable things that you can commit to for like 90 days minimum and marry those actions every single day. And I'm talking whether you're on your deathbed 
or whether you're traveling that day, it does not matter. Get your butt up and do those five or six things and commit to them. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Courtney because I want you to talk about some of the breakthroughs that you've seen on the team, especially, specifically, some of the, the three individuals that you and I talked about today. And then you can end it too because I'm done. <laughs> So what's been really, really cool for me is I've been the first one that has been guilty as a leader to be like, you're a runner or you're not. You either got it or you don't. Bullshit. Like if you have that mindset when you view people, get out of here with that now. Um, I have watched three girls have this massive, massive breakthrough and it's in different areas because your poison takes your antidote. Your poison is completely different than mine, right? Um, Janie, Shelby, and Julia have experienced massive breakthroughs this month. I mean, to where it redefined me and my business. Like it redefined the way I view people. It redefined so much about how I am as a leader. Um, Janie, Janie is someone who is young, who is very green and didn't have the experience. She, in my opinion, from an outsider looking in, was always positive, always showed up, but she just didn't have the experience. This month, massive breakthrough because she kept going, y'all, oh, you want to know how long her breakthrough took? A year. It took a year. Shelby, massive breakthrough this month because she was doubting herself, right? A completely different breakthrough, Julia. Julia, and she might argue with me different, but to me, she would never doubt it herself. She never came to me and said, I don't think I can do this. I, she never, ever did that. Hers was different. Hers was more like, I know I can do this. I know my breakthrough's coming. I'm going to keep pounding, right? I will be honest. Julia's, I've never heard negative, and I don't mean that rude like Janie and Shelby have been negative. I'm saying everyone has their different roadblock, right? Julia was just like, I know I can do this. I know my time's coming. That chick tapped into this network of people like as a chief that she didn't know she had and has like signed 60 people. And I'm like, where the hell have you been hiding these people? But it's so cool to watch their breakthrough. It's so cool to watch somebody break barriers. You don't know what barriers you have or what barriers you're putting on yourself. I don't know why Julia never posted in that um, chief group that she's in. I don't know why Shelby had self-doubt. I don't know why Janie, you know what I'm saying? Like those are all um, specific to them as individuals. But what I do know is they kept going. They kept fighting they kept showing up and there's one thing they all do have in common and that's consistency. I have never been on a zoom with Julia where she's like, yeah, but I've tried da, 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 and this isn't working. I've never talked with that about Shelby or Janie. It has always been forward focused solution focused and my next win focused. Who is the next life that I'm going to get to go and change? That is what sets them apart. Not because they're better, bigger, no more people or like they were handed a different delta different um hand of cards it is because they are consistent in their minds they are consistent in their actions and they have like seen those roadblocks and like plowed them over guys we all have roadblocks my roadblocks look different than yours yours look different than mine what i challenge you to do do not come to me and talk about your roadblocks i remember one last thing and i'm going to end it I met with one of my friends, sorry, my voice is like, I'm losing my voice. My allergies are so bad. Um, one of my friends came over to my house this week and we were brainstorming and I am the type of leader where, you know, I'm very focused on my business. It doesn't mean I won't help you, but I will not help you with the same thing more than once. I won't. It's not a good use of my time. It's not a good use of your time, right? What did we say, Steph? You can, um, take massive action, but you can't waste time planning for massive action. It's the knowing and doing gap. You can know what to do all day, but if you don't take action, I'm not going to meet with you more than twice about the, uh, more than once about the same thing. I refuse. I'm sorry. I will not. You shouldn't do that either with your team. Um, so my friend came over, we met for three hours and 
what was so cool to me is like we could identify the things that she needed, the things she needed to take massive action on. And then we're like, okay, and let's come back to the drawing board in 90 days and see what worked and what didn't work. And this is what she said to me. And I encourage you to do this, whether you are going to somebody or someone is coming to you. She said, I knew I better not show up to your house without a plan. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, your time is valuable, but so is mine. And she like literally had a notebook full of plans. She's like, this is my plan for this. This is my plan for that. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? Versus I don't want, know what to do. I'm doing everything and nothing's working. Right? No, that's negative. Get the hell out of here with that. We have a team page. You may not have things that are working, but you've got to figure that out. Like, Come to me if you want to talk to me, if you want to talk to a leader, if you want to talk to a friend, whatever you want to do to propel you to have that breakthrough, it better be solution focused. And that to me was a huge aha because she didn't come to me and say, well, I have a few ideas, but I just don't really know what to do. She was like, okay, these are my short term. And I didn't tell her to do this. She said, these are my short term goals. These are my long term goals. And these are my action steps. What do you think? And we tweaked her short-term short -term goals. We tweaked her long-term goals. And we tweaked her action steps. That's solution focus. That is living in the positive. That is, we didn't talk about what didn't work. We didn't talk about where she was stuck. We literally focused on goals, on solutions. So I ask you to do that. <clears throat> I challenge you, when you're thinking about that next level, are you thinking about what doesn't work? Are you focused on what does or what, what you can Im like improve without focusing on the negative. Guys, if you tell me, well, I'm doing all the things, but I'm not signing anyone, I don't know what's wrong, I can't help you. Because I can tell you, you're not doing all the things I've coached on, or Stephanie has. That's not me being rude. That is me being straight up 100 with you. If you were doing those things, you would have some results. If you had emotions behind the things you were doing, if you were posting non-spammy, if you were truly doing those things, you would have results. You have to have your own breakthrough. Only you can have your own breakthrough. Not me. I can't do it for you. Steph can't do it for you. Your leaders cannot do it for you. Your accountability partners cannot do it for you. Your accountability partner should be someone that you look up to and say, what ideas do you have that I haven't thought of? That's what your accountability partner should be. Emma's mine. Not that Steph isn't, or I have a lot of different people in my life that keep me positive, but Emma would be mine. And why, let me tell you why Emma's mine. Not because she's my very best friend. Very best friends don't pay my bills. Her volume's more than mine. Her results are more than mine. This is a damn business. I go to her and I say, what have you done that I haven't? What giveaway are you doing that I haven't? What messages are you sending that I haven't, right? That's what your accountability partner, if I went to someone that says, oh, girl, me too, that's a pity party partner, right? I challenge you. There are three different types of people. Someone that can make you feel okay in your certain circumstance. Someone that can make you inferior in your certain circumstance. And someone that can encourage you to get out of your certain circumstance. Who are you surrounding yourself with? If anyone looks at you and says, oh, girl, me too. I didn't earn my trip. I lost rank. Yeah, me too. That's not an accountability partner. That is not someone you should be talking to. If someone looks at you and says, I don't know what your problem is, but I can do it. That's not an accountability partner. Accountability is when someone can look at you and say, I know you can do it. Here's something I've thought of that you haven't thought of. That is what you need to surround yourself with. That's not, hear me, that is not saying I need you to pick five best friends. It's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you need to pick five people that will, pro will propel you to that next level, right? Stephanie may not be my accountability partner one month, right? It doesn't mean she, that's not a negative. That doesn't even mean she's negative. She's still my best friend, right? It is literally where are you lacking that someone else can fill that gap? Because I will tell you, Stephanie's taught me a lot and filled a lot of my gaps, but she may not have something for one of my gaps. You have to know where you're weak. 
you have to know where you can go and fill that void and that need and propel yourself to that next level. And the worst thing you can do is surround yourself with people that are like, girl, me too. Yeah, me too. Me too. Get out of here with that. I don't want anyone in my ear that's not helping me level up and be the like next level of myself. Um, okay. <laughs> really quick, um, giveaways are going to be happening, happening every, um, couple of days, like two to five days. Um, plug your teams in, please, please, please. Those who show up, go up period. I'm sorry. You can't tell me any different. Here's the thing. Do not worry about your team that doesn't show up. I'm telling you show up to go up. Do you think I'm going to go back and look at this Zoom and see who was on and who wasn't? No, I'm about to pack for Vegas and I'm about to make a post. I am telling you show up to go up. Show up for you, okay? Don't show up for your team. Show up for you. Um, don't micromanage your team. I will never say, hey, were you on this Zoom? Ever. I have never, people will say, what do you tell a girl who doesn't hit their VIPs? And I'm like, I don't like, what am I supposed to, I didn't hit my VIPs because of Dustin. Steph didn't hit her VIPs because I wanted her to. Like, that's not why we're in this business. Worry about you. Worry about you and worry about how can you inspire and, and um, have a massive influence over people for the better. Okay. I love y'all. Um, this month, I'm like so freaking hoarse. This month is already mind blowing. Y'all, we're already a 12K team. And it's the second. We've already done um, over $13,000 in volume. And it is the second of the month. I don't know what the hell y'all took last month. <laughs> but Jesus criminy. It is on and popping. Do not take your foot off the gas, y'all. Do not take it. <laughs> circulate. <laughs> I love you, Jules. <laughs> Shh, don't tell Jay about circulate. I love y'all. Um, don't take your foot off the gas. Um, let us know anything you need, but come to us with solutions, um, not problems. Okay. I love y'all.